surface to capture the crew that has already escaped and will escape in the days and weeks ahead. John Hoffmeister is the former president of Shell Oil. He joins us from Houston this morning. Before we get into your idea of uh, how to clean up the, the surface of the Gulf of Mexico, let's talk a little bit about this cut and cap operation. Uh, John, do, do you have any faith after everything that's been tried before and it's either maybe five or six other tries of getting this well stopped that, that this, is, this one is actually going to work? Well, I think it has to be, obviously it has to be tried. From the beginning, BP created with the most brilliant minds in the industry a whole litany of possibilities. And they've gone progressively down this whole litany, trying each and every one of them with all the engineering, all of the parts making, all of the, the, the manufacturing required to try to make it work. It has as, as good a chance as anything we've seen. I think the, the people of America need to see a success here. As good a chance as anything we've seen is not, not exactly a vote of confidence, John. Uh, but but when, you take a no. look at, when you take a look at the engineering here, does, does this have a legitimate chance to work? Well, the chimney stack, I think, taught them about the importance mm -hmm. of the, of the uh, gas hydrates yeah. and how to combat those hydrates. I think the flange built around the base of the blowout protector is probably the right idea along with the methane that they will pour mm -hmm. into there to keep the gas hydrates from forming into a solid mass. So there should, there's every reason to believe that in principle this will work. You know, when you look back at what happened in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Bay of Campeche on the Mexican side back in 1979 at Ishtok Well, it was spewing 30,000 barrels a day for 10 months. They tried virtually everything that BP has been trying to kill the well. Nothing worked until they finally got those relief wells drilled and filled them full of cement. How is it that in 31 years, the only thing that we've learned how to do when it comes to oil is learn how to drill deeper? You know, I think the industry has basically been forced into deeper and deeper water because it's been prohibited from shallow water on 85% of the Outer Continental Shelf. This is a brilliant industry in terms of putting the best engineering uh -huh. minds to work, and they've figured out how to go deeper and deeper. Now they're out in 10,000 feet of water, twice as deep as this well. And, you know, with 35,000 wells drilled, 2,400 or so deep water, this is the first time we've seen this, sure. apart from the Campeche situation. But, 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 you know, at the same time, John, you learn how to drill deeper and deeper and tap into to oil reserves that are further and further offshore. But is it an incumbent upon you as a company to, to say, okay, if we're going to drill in 5,000 foot water or eight or 10,000, as some uh, rigs are now, that we better have a darn good disaster plan in place in case something goes wrong? And that's clearly missing here. The disaster plan up until now has been a hundred percent reliance on the well, the blowout protector. Mm -hmm. And we have to find out what happened that this didn't work. Because somehow it's been compromised yeah. because it should have worked. Well, let's talk a little bit about this super tanker idea. This is something that uh, you and Nick Posey have been talking about. Uh, Nick uh, handled an oil spill for the uh, Aramco company, which is the Saudi's national oil company. Uh, uh, they used a super tanker with big hoses through them out there. I guess it was in the, either in the Persian Gulf or off the shore of Saudi Arabia somewhere and sucked up a lot of this oil on the surface. Would, would that work here? Have you spoken to BP about it? What has BP said about the idea? Well, we've spoken to BP. We've also spoken to the Coast Guard. If the idea has worked somewhere else in the world, it should certainly work here. What I'm worried about is this is a paradigm shift, and big institutions like the Coast mm -hmm. Guard, like BP, have this problem with NIH, not invented here syndrome. Gotcha. And, you know, the, the, the oil that's washed up on the Alabama and Mississippi uh, outer island beaches now there's no reason that that could not have been sucked off the surface by either a line of barges with big pumps or super tankers that are moving around the Gulf. The idea surfaced more than a month ago. It's not going to be a quick remedy to get super tankers, to get the pipes installed, to get people practiced and up to speed with how to do it, but I think we've lost a month. The people of the Gulf Coast deserve better than what they've been getting. Burning and skimming and dispersing obviously isn't working. Why do we keep repeating what doesn't work? Right. Let's try something different. The symbol of it would, I think, give people a lot of encouragement and hope. And the substance of it 
could actually collect a lot of crude oil. Now, BP is disputing whether or not it would be good because of the way that the dispersants have created long ribbons of oil. But, John, maybe, maybe it's an idea whose time has come, and maybe they'll finally get the message. John Hoffmeister, good to talk to you this morning. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it. Karen? All right, John, well, it's 44 minutes past the hour. Jeff